Welcome to this special episode of Arizona Mining Review. I'm Lee Allison, your host here at the Arizona Geological Survey in Tucson. And joining me today is Dr. Peter McGaw, local geologist and mining expert and mineral collector. And Peter is the exhibits chairman for the Tucson Gem and Mineral Society, which is hosting this year's 60th anniversary of Tucson Gem, Silver, Gold, and Diamonds. What, Peter, welcome back. Well, thanks. It's good to be here again, Lee. I think you were on either our first or second show when we started this up a year ago, and uh, we've survived uh, a year. So, and we're, Well, we're with noticeable improvement, <laughs> so your <laughs> practice is obviously uh, paying off. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it, it sounds like it's going to be an incredible show this year, 60th anniversary, so you've specialized in, in really exciting things, mm -hmm. diamonds, gems, silver, and gold. What should we be looking for at the show this year? Well, um, you know, as I just said, uh, practice helps, and we've been at it now 60 years, so we think we're finally getting close to having it right. Um, but this year, uh, in addition to having some wonderful exhibits, we have all new exhibit cases. The exhibit cases that we've been using literally for 50, more than 50 years have all been replaced and we've completely modified the floor plan to feature exhibits and feature our main mineral dealers. So uh, as you walk into the hall you'll be faced with stunning exhibits and the biggest and best mineral booths that have ever been built in our show before. So a very different feel to the whole thing. It sounds dramatic change. Yep. Okay, well, and now you're going to have some incredible exhibits I hear coming. We have wonderful exhibits. As you said, the, the theme is gold, diamonds, gems, and silver. So uh, we have the Smithsonian bringing a spectacular uh, diamond tiara from the National Collection. We have a Cartier diamond necklace coming from Scottsdale. We have a sapphire button being brought by the British Museum of Natural History, which came from the collection of the man who founded uh, that institution. Uh, plus we have gold crystals, gold specimens and jewelry and other gold and silver artifacts that survived the 9-11 World Trade Center attack and were recovered after the during the cleanup operations. These were in safe deposit box? They were in a safe something? deposit box uh, on one of the lower floors of the building and wow. the whole thing came down on top of them and they survived. They survived. So. Uh, wow. It's a spectacular exhibit. Uh, they really are wonderful specimens, but then they've got this additional history. And on top of that, a number of the pieces belong to the family of the gentleman who owned them, and they survived the Holocaust in Germany as well. Oh. So you, wow. you might want to think twice about owning one of these <laughs> things, uh, just but, uh, because of their history. But the history of them alone. The history I of them alone is spectacular. Wow, that's incredible. Well, now, TGMS is an all volunteer society, but I understand this is a hallmark year for you as a volunteer. How many years is chair of the exhibits? Somewhere more than 25. Okay. So, <laughs> That's it, it was a wake-up call to realize that it's a 60th year show and I've been around for many more than half of them. Because okay. uh, <laughs> I moved here to Tucson for the show. Um, is that, that was right? that was That was the deciding factor between two geologic jobs. And I decided that Tucson and looking for gold and silver beat Denver and looking for molybdenum. And since okay. the molybdenum market crashed six months after I took the job in Tucson, that was the right decision. I've <laughs> been here ever since. I've been here ever since. Well, um, uh, what I understand is that, that there's uh, silver coming from Mexico, there's gold coming from Nevada, there's just incredible pieces coming in from yes, all over. Yes, have, we have several group shoot cases where a number of collectors have collaborated to bring in Silvers from Kongsberg in Norway, silvers from Arizona, silvers from Mexico, silvers from Michigan, uh, golds from Nevada, um, just amazing crystallized and natural specimens. Wow. I, you've brought some specimens in here today. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what you've got here? These are the, every one, each one of these is, is spectacular. Well, I brought in three different things. One yes. looks like a rock, and it's very gaudy <laughs> colored, and, yeah. and this one's important because this is um, bornite and chalcopyrite, uh, which is copper mineral and very familiar, should be familiar to Arizona uh, mining people. This is the principal mineral produced in Arizona's mines. Now, this is a solid lump of the stuff, <laughs> and there's probably as much uh, chalcopyrite in this chunk as there is in about a ton of ore from most of Arizona's <laughs> okay. mines. but so, uh, Not typical of what the companies are mining on No, average. but they would <laughs> certainly love to have that. Uh, this is a, a little cavern of smithsonite complete with stalactites in the whole thing. Smithsonite is a zinc carbonate. Uh, 
tends to form in really pretty greens and blues and pinks sometimes. Uh, this is out of a mine in Mexico. Uh, uh, silver mine? It's a, well, it's a silver lead zinc mine. Oh, most, okay. of, most of the mines in Mexico yep. are, you get, you get a number of metals with them. So in this particular case, this is forming right at the water table where zinc that got dissolved oh. out of the upper part of the ore right. body reprecipitates at the water table and forms okay. these lovely caverns. And then this is a quartz crystal with a chlorite phantom in it. Uh, wow. So this okay. is basically, this. there's a lovely story here that the crystal grew for a while and then this green mineral chlorite deposited on top of it and then it went back to depositing quartz. Oh. And the quartz doesn't even see the dirt, if you will, that right. the chlorite represents. And so when you look at it, what you're seeing is a, is an, is a moment of arrested growth uh, as in the development of that crystal. That's so. incredible. That's beautiful. All right. Now, the, uh, the, the various uh, auxiliary shows going on around town are underway, and there's somewhere between 40 and 50 of them. It's hard to keep track of them scattered all over. But, but uh, uh, I, I've been out uh, looking at a few of the shows, and the first thing I noticed was the lack of parking. Everywhere I go, the parking lots are packed. And they're waving you on saying, you know, we're oversold here. You've got to go find someplace else to park. Mm -hmm. My sense is that the recession really may be over and that the, the, the market is coming back. And the, the show sales in the, in the various shows around Tucson had dropped off uh, when the recession hit. But my sense is this year it's come back bigger than, than I can ever remember it. It's come back very strongly. And, of course, you have to remember that if you're a business owner, and you're selling things like mineral specimens, you need new stock. And if you go through a several year cycle where you can't afford to replace your stock, oh. your business, your customers come in looking for something new. If you don't have anything new and you haven't right. gotten anything new for two or three years, if you want to keep your customers, you got to load up. So okay. there's a lot of pent up buying that people haven't done for two or three years that all seems to be happening this year so okay. that should be there should be a lot of smiling people I've talked to several friends who are dealers who said their opening day last Friday was the best opening day they've ever had at Tucson you know I've talked to a few dealers myself and uh, I think what caught my attention once I found a place to park and got inside some of the shows was the number of sold signs that I saw on specimens and not just mm -hmm. you know some small specimen on the table but uh, my eye would catch probably the biggest you know glossiest most spectacular piece mm -hmm. that this dealer would have, and there's the sold sign. And a number of them said the, the first day or two days they were open, they were selling out their premier specimens. I was mainly looking at fossils uh, and, and when I was out, but uh, they, they were all smiling and talking about how much they had sold and how many of the high-end pieces they sold. Mm -hmm. it certainly seems to fit. Well, that would suggest we may have an incredible turnout for the main show at the convention center. We certainly hope so. I mean, if you listen to what the State Department of Tourism has been telling us for a few years, that we went from a hundred million dollar economic effect in Tucson, and this isn't what's going on in the business, this isn't going yeah. on between the dealers, this is right. what's left behind in Tucson, was a hundred million dollars until the economic downturn in 2008, and that dropped to 60 or 70 million, mm -hmm. and last year it was back up to 80. So we could well be okay. back up to or exceeding the 100 million that we were prior to 2008. So that's very important, and and we're hoping that our complete revamping of the show and these oh, yeah. exhibits that we're bringing in that uh, are so fantastic will bring lots of people out because what you know, TGMS, our main goal is to educate people on mm -hmm. minerals and earth science and the profits from our show go back into the local schools uh, to get kids exposed to geology and mm -hmm. earth sciences in all of their all of its forms right. uh, that's that's our main mission that's why we have junior education yeah. at the show and that's why we run four thousand almost five thousand school kids through uh, the show every Friday morning to uh, expose them to this and this has been part of TGMS since the very beginning, a very strong desire to educate. Yeah. Uh, so the more people who come out to the show and enjoy the show, you'll get some of your admission money back as your kids and grandkids right. go through <laughs> uh, the schools in the Tucson area. That's or perfect. go to the University of Arizona for that matter. Right, perfect. Well, I, I think that's a part of the TGMS that most people don't think about or don't realize because the big show here is what they all see and they don't see the one-on-one -on -one classroom activities and 
and things scattered around the, the community. So now I think this helps people understand where does all that money go that goes into that. Mm -hmm. But it also, I think this year, has gone back to revamp the show floor. And I think if anybody didn't have another reason to go, go see it this year because there's so much there. It's overwhelming to take it all in. And if you've repackaged it in, in the way you've described here, it's going to allow people to really make sure that they see the biggest, the brightest, the most spectacular stuff and focus their attention on, on things that they might have not even been aware was there. Well, I hope that's the case, but I hope they're still overwhelmed. They're still overwhelmed, <laughs> right. All right, Peter, thank you very much and best of luck in this year's show. Pleasure, Lee. Look forward to seeing you down at the show. I'll be there. Good. All right, thanks.